Hello and welcome to the part 2 of this Laravel CRUD application. I know I've been late but you will excuse me, I was taking care of other things. Last time we have seen on how to insert the data in the database without page refresh and today I'm going to show you how to fetch the data from the database and I'm going to do that in step by step as always. So let's go back to the code and see what we can do for now. While we are here in this card, we left this as blank and this is where we are going to initialize our table and you're going to make the table as the placeholder for where all the data will be displayed. For this case, I'm going to make the table class and I'm going to give it another class of the table bordered and I'm going to give it another class of table responsive and another for table uh, striped like this one. Go ahead and press enter and now the emit will do its heavy work and it will complete all the classes for us. All right, now inside the table, as always, we need now the table head or the heading of the table. And inside the table heading, I'm going to make some tiara and put some th. I put the id and other fields. And those are all the required fields. And as we are trying to make the table by using emit extension, it somehow messed up. So we need to change this from div to table. And I'm going to do this like this and then save and I'm going to make a bit of formatting to match this line and that's now cool all right after now we are done with the table header we're going to put in some table body and inside the table body that's where we need to uh, input some of the other things for example I'm going to put in the tiara and I'm going to count this will be six I'm going to do td and then I'm going to do like six, like this one, all right? And inside here, I'm going to put in some press holders, like this one, then we will, we will change this later on, where when we will be putting the real data. So I'm going to be putting like 12, and on uh, action here, let me make this as action. And on the action, I'm going to put some two buttons, so I'm going to make burn, and I'm going to give it burn uh, primary, and I'm going to give it a margin end of two to make a bit of space and then press enter. And this will be called uh, edit. And I'm going to copy the same button and I'm going to do the same for the delete button in here. But for this case, I'm going to make this as danger. And don't forget to put in BTN. Looks like Emmett didn't complete did that for us. And here too. All right, so I'm going to make this as a delete and here we go. So let's go and test if this worked. So I'm going to refresh and this is now how it's looking. And you can see now the buttons are a bit of huge. So I'm going to pass in another class for BTN SM to make these buttons as small buttons. Uh, BN SM. All right, so let's go back and refresh. You can see now the bands are somehow good and you can see all the data that we populated in here are also there and those data are going to be the press holders are going to change that in a moment i'm going to go back after we finish with that i'm going to go back in the javascript and i'm going to add another function here and it will be inside here and i'm going to call this function as a function fetch employees as it will be used to fetch the employees and it will be like this one and inside this function this is where we are going to input some more required codes to go and fetch the employees to do that i'm going to do the ajax request so i'm going to uh, use this ajax and then the method will be a get method and url i'm going to make this as fetch uh, employees like this one this is now the URL where it will get all the data and you don't need the data as this is now the, the get request and I'm going to make this as a JSON and then for testing purposes you can go ahead and console.log the response and you will see that uh, on the log before we do anything with the response that we'll be getting from now the controller and after we do that I'm going to go in the loots and th then the loots that where I'm going to add this method and to help us to get to the endpoint that we will set in the controller. 
So I'm going to go and go to web and I'm going to, as we will be getting this, I'm going to copy this get one and paste it here. And I'm going to make this as a fetch employees like this one. And now it will be in the employee controller and here, and I need to change here and make it as fetch employees like this one. This is now the end point that it will hit whenever we need to fetch the employees. So I'm going to go in the employee controller, uh, employee controller here. And inside here, I'm going to make another function, but to speed up the process, I'm going to copy this and paste it here. And after here, I'm going to call this as fetch employees, like the exact name that you called it. And for this function, what it will do, it will try to return all the data from the database and to return all the data regarding the employees. And as we having employee model, I'm going to pass it here, employee, and then I'm going to call the or method. After calling the or method, uh, I'm going to assign this to a variable and I'm going to call this employee or employees as it will be in the plural. And I'm going to do like this one. And after getting this, what are we going to do with this one? We're going to try to return the data as a JSON format as we, we set it here that we will accept the data as JSON format. I'm going to go here and I'm going to say, okay, return a response. And I'm going to do like this one. Then I'm going to convert this response to JSON. And inside this JSON, this is where I'm going now to call. I'm going to call these employees. And after I'm going to, I'm going to say that employees will be go to employees. Just like that. All right. After doing this, uh, you can go ahead. Uh, let me still complaining. So let's try to add the camera here. All right. Now the error is gone. And after we do that, we expect to see all the employees on the console. But before we do that, when you come back to the index, you go ahead and on initialize or on ready, you can go ahead and call the fetch employees function in here. So whenever we refresh, we will try to fetch the employees to try to call this function. So let me go back and test. Whenever I refresh and go to console, and you can see that I'm having this object and it contains the employees, you can see that I'm getting all these two employees from the database, like we're having them right here. Nice. So the next thing is to replace this one with the data that we'll be getting from the from the request. So let's do that. After we're getting all the data, I'm going to cross this one. I'm going to first of all, I'm going to remove. I'm going to remove this console.log. We don't need it either. And what we are going to do with our response, we are going to loop over our response to get all the individual values. So to do that, I'm going to, to use uh, the each and I'm going to use this short and I'm going to say response dot employees. And here I will say, okay, after getting now this response, I will point to the employees and I'm going to call this as key and I'm going to call this as item. All right, and inside this loop, I'm going to go ahead and try to append some of the parameters to the T body. So I'm going to call the T body in here and I'm going to say, okay, T body, and I'm going to append. And what am I going to append in here? I'm going to try and bring all this kind of table here from here up to here. I'm going to cut it from there and i'm going to try to paste it here and after pasting this one let's try to do like this one i'm going to surround it with this and this and as we'll be having the new lines it requires to do like this one to indicate that this is a continuous a uh, string like this one so as to remove all these kind of errors and we we'll do it up to here up to this level and these two all right so when we go back here and test we expect to see two lows but with the default values so let's let's go ahead and refresh you can see that we are getting two lows with the default values 
And the next thing that we have to do is to, to replace these default values with the actual values from the request. So I'm going to bring back this one and where we have these twelves, I'm going to remove all these twelves and we're going to input appropriate data. So I'm going to put this and I'm going to put in like this one and inside this one, this is where I'm going to say, okay, item and I'm going to say ID and I'm going to put in item dot names and item uh, here it is item dot email and item dot phone and item dot roar all right so whenever we come back here and refresh we expect to see the original values in there so you can see that i was able to get all these values from the database but we are not done yet we need to add another employee and you will see if it will be populated here after we add the employee so let me go ahead and do it real quick and i'm going to use this sample data some random number as cashier no problem so go ahead and save change all right you can see that there is nothing happened that's because we didn't call the function after the insert so we are going to go back here after all and i'm going to fetch the employees like this one so let's go ahead and test it again refresh and then you can see i, I was able to get this one as we refresh the page but you don't need to refresh the page either i'm going to add the employee again i'm going to call this christian2 and christian2 two or three at gmail.com it doesn't matter these are now the fake data that i'm using and i'm going to score this as manager and save hmm we got another problem as we were appending it where it, it, it didn't check if the now the table contain anything so i'm going to go back here and before we append anything we have to clean up the table so inside here i'm going to go ahead and say okay uh t body and i'm going to say that it's html it will be empty like this one i hope this will solve the issue but let's witness this one i'm going to go back so refresh and i'm going to go back and add a new employee and chris at gmail.com chris uh well, let, me, let me put my some random phone number and let me call as a night and save change wow what why is it bring like this one it looks like we have to put this up all right here we need to clean up refresh and let me add a new employees and i'm going to call this as kz and kz at gmail.com some random number and is our cashier too hmm when you go ahead and save change you can see now for this time it was able to populate this new entry into our database all right that was it on how to fetch the data from the database without any page refresh and i hope to see you guys in the next video and quick reminder all of these source codes that i'm i used on this project are available on my github page you can go ahead and leave a start on one of my repositories i will appreciate that one all right see you another time cheers